In the second half uh, of this content, we will then go into digital innovation and, and really build our own processes. For that, we have to also understand what innovation actually is. And the technical definition from innovation theory, uh, one of the main theories we are working with, is that innovation is the recombination of things. It's just the combination of, of other blocks. Nothing comes from nothing. Not even the wheel is invented out of nothing. It's just the combination of previous things we knew. Same as when you innovate, when you mix colors or build Lego blocks or whatever you do. So first of all, we need some blocks. And I collected quite a bit of digital trades over the last quarter century, and, and I hope that's not too much. But the more blocks you have, the more combinations you can make. So I give you seven of from communication, seven from storage, and seven from computation. And then we explore them one by one. For example, in communication, digital, digital is, is built in network structures, and that's very important. It doesn't go linear like an assembly line, like an industrial age. It's network, so we have to understand network lingo. Social networks, as we, we know them, your family network, that you actually know your family network, right? So now we bring that to the forefront of digital reality, and we have to understand also the terminology and, and what these networks does. Now, information networks also have network externalities, which is very important and very different from the previous analog industrial age. In the industrial age, if you have something like an apple or a car or something really tangible, a product that you can touch, if you have more people using it, everybody gets less. So if two people share an apple, well, if they're fair, everybody gets half an apple. So the more people you have using it, it's the law of scarcity. In the digital age, if you only have one in a network, I mean, who, who you want to call? Like, it's like, honestly. So the more people you have in the network, the more value you get. Now, that is very funny for economists. They still like don't process that a lot. It's the more, more you have, the more value each one gets. And they get exponentially more value. That's called positive network externality. And these are kind of the building blocks we need to understand. Now, combined with this amazing data overflow that we get from the digital footprint that we all leave behind with every digital step, we take and we give it away for free a lot. Now, we have our smart homes and yes, your favorite smart speaker is listening to you and they have to listen to you because when you say, I don't know, hey, Google or Alexa or Siri or whatever your code word is, I mean, they already have to listen. Otherwise, they wouldn't hear when you say that. And then once you awaken them, a colleague of mine here at the University, California Davis, has shown that, yes, in the con to the contrary of whatever they say, yeah, they, they listen to you and they use that when you activate it for marketing. That's why these things pop up that you just mentioned in your kitchen yesterday and you have the feeling like, how did I ever, how do I get this ad? Isn't that convenient, <laughs> right? So we leave this digital footprint behind. And once you have this data, you have infinite economies of scale because how do you duplicate it? Well, it's just right mouse button, copy, paste. Also very different. If you want to grow a second apple or you want to build a second car in the agricultural or in the industrial age, you need to really, I mean, there are economies of scale. The more apple trees you plant and the more cars you produce, it gets a little cheap. But in, info, in information, it's like once you have the data, there is no cost to create, right? Mouse button, copy, paste. What cost is that? So there is no variable cost. And we will have to talk about that and really let it sink in. It's very different to do get around in a, in a digital reality. And the same applies to AI. If one self-driving car can drive to avoid an accident, basically, basically all artificial intelligence can do that. Because again, right mouse button, copy, paste. And that's why also AI inevitably will become much better in some things than we are. Because a child, you have to train again, right? Artificial intelligence, just like copy, paste, and then the next neural net can do that. Now, once we have these building blocks, then we're going to create innovations with it. We're first going to see like what happened already. When you combine them, independent from us creating something, for example, if you just take economies of scale and network externalities, you get these amazingly big monopolies. Did I say that? Or oligopolies, uh, where you have basically this, this large concentration of ownership. Because you can create these digital economies of scale, the network externalities, 
makes sense that you have huge networks because the bigger they are, the exponentially more value you get out of it. And we need to understand how that came about. It's not because of greed or like, I mean, it's basically that's how the digital age is structured. So it's important to understand these concepts to understand what's going on in the digital age. And then we can also, you know, pick some out and do our own recombinations and see you can come up with your own business model there or with your own public policy project or social social project, whatever you are after, and create your own you know, innovations with it. Just pick some out and we will explore some of these again. And that's what we will do in this part. We will, at the end, create our own digital innovations and you can get a million different combinations out of these traits that we are working through here. And I'm very curious to find out what you innovate with in, in the digital age. And there's so many innovations to still be explored.